Good morning everyone. I am in the amazing new forest. This is my absolute favourite time of year. Surrounded by the autumn foliage. I don't care what people say when they say that we're past peak. We're well and truly in it. And I just hear the words, we're past peak, and I just think, that sounds like you've given up. But I can tell you, the leaves on the trees, they're still there. So long as that last leaf is on the branch, I'm certainly going to be still taking photos out here. It is just absolutely stunning. For me, it's like walking through the snow, walking through the spring when you get the first leaves. And it's just that season where it's just magical, it really is. So I'm looking for compositions. I've got the sun quite a way up. Um, actually, first of all, what I should do, I'll apologize for my last video, the astrophotography. Now I can tell you, it's really hard videoing yourself, turning the camera off for quite some period of time, <laughs> turning it back on again and forgetting what you last said. So I found myself being quite erratic and all over the place. Um, I think I need to plan those sorts of things a bit better. But that was a bit of a whim. I grabbed the camera and I legged it out the door. And um, I like to think I pulled off some good photos there. There's a game that I'm playing at the moment, Starfield. And that last image of me standing there, looking off the top of the tree at the stars, just makes me think of something out of that game. Um, I quite like my games. Um, I've been playing them since my childhood, so yeah, go all the way back to the Spectrums, Sega Master Systems, Mega Drives, all of it. Um, I absolutely love my gaming. Oh, look at this. I'm not going to miss this. Look through there. I think that's what I'm interested in. I'm, the sun is up high enough to reach over the trees and light, spotlight some areas of the forest. Some people might think that's quite, it's quite harsh. And it is, it is. Um, but if you think about reducing your exposure and then making the surrounding areas a bit darker, um, you can make that center of attention area really pop. Uh, what am I looking at here? Uh, I think this is a beach. If you look, and it does help to understand. It really does help to understand what trees you're looking at. I really can't stress enough that understanding what you're looking at helps you decide what time of this month, of this two months, however long it lasts, to come out and photograph these because not all trees go at the same time. They all go at separate times during the autumn. And it's just fireworks. You get one tree, set of trees going off. Then you get another set of trees about a week later. We're about two weeks in. And look at it, it's still giving it. I've got to find myself a composition and get a photo. So I'm just gonna walk. I've been walking along the main road. Um, there's not many parking spaces on the side of the road. So I'm kind of banking on being on my own sort of thing. I like being on my own. I can think better. I won't get people stopping me and talking for hours on end because I, I probably would. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna head back up to the road. I'm gonna walk along a little bit further. Um, I just wanted to get away from the road to have a little chat with you. And uh, yeah, onwards and upwards, we'll look for a photo. And I'll switch you back on. So catch up in a little bit. Okay, I think I found my first image. Can you see that lovely tree in there? Beautiful. Look behind it, it's really dark. Um, and that's because there's a bog down there. Most of the trees are evergreen so 
<clears throat> they will pretty much keep their foliage and remain green. What a stunning shot though. They've got a side light. The sun's over here. It's just peeking over the trees at the moment. But look at that. It looks like fire. It's amazing. So I'm going to capture that. I've got to move quite quickly because that light doesn't last forever. It just moves through the trees and it might change the whole thing. So yeah, I'm going to move quite quickly. And a good example of that, this morning I, as I was driving through the forest, I saw um, an opening and there's a little white horse on the side of the hill and there was mist drifting down into the valley and you could see big clouds out towards, um, I suppose, in the direction of the sea. And uh, yeah, as I drove past, I thought, I need my camera. So I spun the car around, went back. In that time that I took the camera out, don't forget I had to change my settings from astro photography to uh, landscape photography as well. Handheld, did a sweep, and uh, the image didn't look as misty as I first saw it, say, on the approach in the car. So I feel like that's, you know, I missed a moment there. So yeah, you've got to move quite quickly to get these. It's changing all the time in front of you. So yeah, you might get some of the top area shading away and stuff like that. So I'm going to move quite quickly, get this image. I put that other image up that I took, the sweeping mist into the land, into the, bleh, into the valley. I've got a few branches that are overhanging in front of the tree and growing in front of it. But I'm hoping that's not too much of a distraction. I'm going for trying to get the most lit up area of that tree in that little gap. Um, there is sky peeping through in the background, but I'm hoping that that's not too much of a distraction either. I'm going to try a few shots. I might even try the other lens because I feel like at, even at 70, I'm too close to it. So I might just swap the lens out. I've got my ISO at 100. I'm at f11 and I'm 1 over 15th of a second for shutter. Um, yeah, I hope you um, like the image. come very far from my last shot and that's the wonderful thing as well about woodland photography you don't have to go too far I'm miles away from the car but um, you don't have to go too far to find your next composition I really like this there's a log that's fallen over and there's condensation um, or um, mist just rising off of the log from the sun's rays hitting the back of it and it's backlit these um, leaves on this tree in front of me as well. And I've got down really low because if I stood up, I get a lot of tree trunk in it and there's a lot of space between me and what I'm seeing. So I kind of want to close that up by getting lower and making it look like there's more foliage in the foreground. So I'm going to take this composition and I'll show you it on the back of the camera. And I'll show you what I'm doing as well, because it's a difficult one. I've got the polarizer on. So as you can see, that's my image. That's what I'm seeing. That's the little fallen log leaning out. And there is, you can see it just drifting off there in the background the mist is just lifting off of it and so yeah I'm having to underexpose because I'm going to have loads of clipping going on otherwise I'm lucky here very fortunate I've got a very dark forest um, backlit in the background but obviously the sun's not getting through so it looks very dark and I can tell you there's autumn foliage on those trees as well so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that composition and take a few of them because that mist comes and goes, especially when the wind picks up a little bit. 
I love all the little spider webs that are crossing as well. I'm going to show you as well what a difference that that polarizer is making on this scene. If you look down in the bottom, I'll see if I can get rid of that graph. If you watch down in the bottom, can you see how it's bringing a lot more ref um, white areas, reflected areas in that foliage on the floor. <clears throat> so what this is doing is it's cutting through that glare, reducing it for me, which means I get a lovely photograph. <laughs> I'll put that one on the screen. I think I'm going to push the shadows up in Photoshop. I already have an idea what I'm going to do with the image when I get back. So when I see something like this and I see it's dark, I, I just want to push the shadows up a little bit and that's probably all I'll do. You can see the sh um, shutter's still the same. 125th of a second, F11, I say 100. Let's go and find another composition. Here's that photo anyway. just found a really nice composition here if you look down there there's quite a nice tree lit up in that little gap and these trees leaning into it and although it looks really dark on the back of my camera I can assure you just by bumping those shadows on that histogram it's going to look great so I'm clipping ever so slightly on the whites very slightly you probably won't see it i've got a polarizer on as well because i want to get rid of some of that glare down on the floor and this, and the reason why the polarizer doesn't work 100 percent is because i'm shooting into the sun and usually polarizers work best when you shoot 90 degrees off of the sun so yeah nice little composition Nice little corridor leading down to a well-lit tree, autumn foliage, right down the bottom there. Autumn foliage always looks really good backlit, so that's why I'm going for this shot. There we go. So I've just done a sweeping pano of the fallen log um, which has come off of a big birch tree. Um, it's got a lovely little snake sort of um, curvature to it and it just looks really stunning. So I've got that image, so I've focused once, locked it and then I've just swept through taken several photos whilst it's still on the tripod at f f11 one tenth of a second iso 100 and uh yeah here's the image mm -hmm. 